collaborations between scientists and artists can produce some fascinating outcomes. But often these projects fall on one side of the divide, being works of art inspired by science or scientific exhibits with artistic merit. But a new project developed at the University of Bristol represents a genuine fusion of art and science. The Dance Room Spectroscopy project results in a visual art show that is governed by some of the laws of physics. Let's go meet the project's mastermind, physical chemist David Glowacki. So what's the general idea behind the Dance Room Spectroscopy project? Essentially it started um, with a, through a conversation between myself and a friend uh, to make music via motion. But what we quickly found out was that that idea had been done to death. So um, I came up with a more interesting way of attacking uh, that problem, which was to combine physics, theoretical um, chemistry in particular, which is my research area, in order to make sounds and visuals that people could interact with, to combine art and science in a way that would have an appeal toward members of the public that don't confront physics in their everyday life, and to sort of inspire curiosity about the beauty of the microscopic world for these sorts of people. But physically, what is it? I mean, what kind of equipment is involved? So what we do is we run a certain kind of molecular dynamics simulation on a, la on, a, on a Mac laptop, something called a Feynman-Hibbs dynamic simulation. So Feynman-Hibbs equations are equations for approximating the quantum behavior of a system at long times. And what we do is we have a number of atomic particles in our simulation box on the computer. We run the simulation using something called a Leonard-Jones force field, which is a standard way of representing interactions in gas phase and condensed phase chemistry. And what happens in that simulation is all the particles, the simulation chugs along, all the particles do their thing, they interact with each other, bounce off with each other, they're attracted, they're repelled. The next step in order to make it innovative and what's the sort of interesting part about the art exhibition that we're doing is that we connect that simulation to a, a Microsoft um, Xbox Connect camera. And so what it is, is it's a real-time infrared depth sensor. So it sends you back a matrix of depth values in real time to the computer. So we hook that up to our particle simulation box. And now that depth map is the external force field that all the particles feel. So when people step into the field that the camera sees, they effectively warp the force field of the particle fields. So if you imagine the particles all moving around in a flat sheet in the absence of anybody being in the field of the camera, when somebody steps into the field of the camera, now they represent either a mountain or a valley on the topology of that potential energy surface. And so the particles dynamically, in real time, organize themselves around these different force field perturbations. And we project it somewhere where people can see the way that they interact with it. And it creates a sort of immersive molecular dynamics experience. So can you tell me a bit more about the, the kind of shapes that these particles take on when people have interacted with them? So people, when they step into the field of the camera, can be attract, can, the particles can feel them as either an attractive or a repulsive perturbation. And we have the flexibility on our computers to control whether what particles are attracted, which are repelled. We can control a number of things about the particles. And what we've observed in the exhibitions that we've done is that the most beautiful art, the most interesting patterns arise when people are acting together um, coherently and cooperating with one another. So when people make large circles or when people make spirals or these sorts of patterns, then you see the particles sort of self-assemble around these interesting topologies that people are making on the force field. This generates the most beautiful results. And also, how, how does the sound relate to this? Because uh, there's, there's music with the performance. Who, who's actually generating that? Yeah, so one of the goals of this project was to develop an experience which was 
immersive in an audio and a, and a visual. When particles collide with each other, we send out event triggers. So the computer that's running the dynamic simulation is hooked up to some other computers. And it's sending information every time there's a particle collision. And the other computers are manned by electronica artists. So we're working, for example, with a musician, um, a few musicians. And what the musicians can do is they can decide what musical notes to map these collision event triggers into to generate sort of ambient soundscapes that come from the particle collision dynamics. So what have people made of it so far, the, the general public and, and the dancers who have had a go with the equipment? Have they enjoyed it? So, so far um, in all our deployments that we've done, it's been incredibly successful. People have really loved it and it's, it's been instructive for us as well. The other thing that has been interesting is in doing this, this sort of hybrid art science project is that on the art side of things, we found that in an exhibition there's a sort of happy medium. If people walk into an exhibition and it's totally obvious to them what's going on, they're not very interested. If they walk into an exhibition and it's, they're completely confounded by what's going on, they're not very interested. The, 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 the golden mean is sort of, if they walk into something, it's, it's intuitive enough for them to get a feel for how it works, but then there's also this sort of mystery behind it that they don't fully comprehend. And what we found is that this works on that level. So it's, people walk into the exhibition space, it's intuitive enough for them to get a feel for what's going on and sort of learn, it on a reason, learn how to interact with it on a reasonable time scale. But on the other hand, it's got this layer of quantum molecular dynamics, which is a mystery that people find intriguing but don't fully understand. And so we found that this exhibition has been extremely successful. I think it's mostly for that reason. And how does this relate to your own research as a, as a physical chemist? So I'm a theoretical physical chemist and what I'm doing every day is simulating, developing methods for simulating matter on the, on the nanoscale, molecular interactions on the nanoscale. And what we've effectively done in this exhibition is we've taken the same algorithms, the same force fields, and we've cast them in a form where people can s literally step in to a force field and interact with atomic and molecular phenomena. What, what do your colleagues think of the project? So the response from my colleagues professors, postdocs, students, spans the, the total spectrum of possible responses from some people thinking it's a completely frivolous waste of time to other people being indifferent to other people thinking it's amazing and really liking it. I will say that most of the people that have come to see the exhibition and have interacted with it have liked it a great deal. And for a number of them, it's changed their attitude toward sort of what can be done in this frontier area of science and art. So it sounds like David's impressive visual art show has been a big hit with both professional dancers and the general public. One big challenge for him now would be to simply find time to balance his two careers as research scientist and multimedia artist, because the Dancing Spectroscopy show looks destined for bigger and wider audiences.